Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Want to do a quick bench update today. Also want to review with you a couple of my favorite scratch building tools. Let's get to it. Okay guys, first up I want to share with you the progress we've made and where we're going, the direction we're going, with our 58 Corvette Custom, which includes some scratch building. And I also want to share with you some nifty little brakes that I've finished for our 132nd scale NASCAR. Um, scratch building. I've mentioned in the past some of the tools that I like to use, but I don't know that, I don't recall getting into too much depth. But uh, we're going to be doing on the Corvette the inside fender wells, uh, partial reconstruction of the firewall to make this thing a true custom. And some of the tools I just couldn't live without, and some of it not whether I'm scratch building or not, but for lining up, uh, rescribing lines, things like that, I use Murphy's Rules. I have one in my uh, travel toolbox, and then I have two here on the workbench. And these are two different brands, but you can pick these up at Harbor Freight for a buck or two. And uh, these little stainless rulers are really invaluable to me. I use these things on every single project. Next up are my dial calipers. Um, this one is in uh, inches and millimeters. It's digital. And this is one of those $9.99 things from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, really cool. And then I have my old trusty, uh, I've had this one for so many years, I don't even remember how long I've had it. Uh, I don't remember not having it, but this is the one I use mostly. And the great thing with this is I can get my measurements for what I'm scribing or need a, to cut out. And I can transfer it over to the dial caliper or from the dial caliper over to the ruler so I can get my cuts as far as height, length, all that kind of stuff for the uh, sheet plastic or aluminum, depending on what it is I'm using. Um, these things are invaluable when it comes to scratch building, at least for me anyway. Next, I could not live without, I don't know how I did live without it uh, in the past, my contour gauge. Um, now this is already, you see where I've set it up here, and I'll show you in some slides here in a minute. When I, I'm going to be making these extra pieces for the air dam. Um, and to do that, you just simply push that right up and lock it, or it locks itself really right there and we have the shape i can transfer this shape over to a piece of sheet plastic take my uh, mechanical pencil and just run that right over it i usually do it on a piece of paper first and uh, for that purpose i keep a couple of pieces of just paper typing paper around just so i can transfer that over and then cut that out and smooth it up um contour gauge Again, this is something you can get at Harbor Freight for like $7.99. Now, this is a really old one I've had for a lot of years. And um, this one was made by General. And uh, it's 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 been a good one. Uh, a lot of them nowadays have the these... Um, well, you see the... You see how that works. And then... Uh, but let's say I wanted to redo a solid bulkhead on this 30-second scale chassis. All I would do is put that right there and just press down. And when I come up, I've got my shape. I can transfer that over to uh, my sheet plastic. I'm trying to get the light right there, guys. And... There you go. Um, but you can do about any shape that you can think of with it. Let's grab this tire here. If you're wanting to do a, a let's say, a specific fender well or something like that, there you go. 
And again, you can find these places. These things were originally designed for woodworkers to re, uh, be able to redo um, like handrails and things like that. And check that out. That almost fits that perfectly. And then you can just reset it. But the contour gauge couldn't live without it. Now, as you see in these slides, since we're doing a diverter tray to the belly of the car, I had to make a few extra modifications that I hadn't planned on to begin with. And again, as I've mentioned in one of the other videos, test fit, test fit, test fit. And when you're scratch building, that's especially true. So what I had to do is you see these two little nubs here that are right inside the grill. I had to remove those. So we took our motor tool and we slowly ground those away. And again, test fit several times to make sure we got uh, just the right even fit for the tray. And next up, we're gonna switch over to that air dam and here's where we're gonna be using our contour gauge. So you see here where we just pressed that right in, uh, made it even as you see here from the bottom view. And that gave us our main shape. Now, at first, I transferred this over to a piece of just regular paper and uh, made some modifications to a couple of different pieces and then test fit. And the two that I really couldn't decide on, I'll share with you here. Once I got those cut out and made, um, these were the two shapes that I decided to use. And the bottom one is the one I really, really kind of like. Here's a look at it from the front. And I've just got it uh, mocked up, taped up there. Uh, got a more modern look. And by the way, no matter which one I end up going with, it's, they're both going to be covered with, uh, uh, or whichever one, they'll be covered with Scale Motorsports carbon fiber. And there's a side view. And then here's the other one, which is just really more of a straight dam that's just mocked up on there and then uh, a side view of that. But I kind of like that first one, and I'm, I'm swaying toward that one, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Next up, the inside fender wells. Now, the fender wells, the firewall, and the uh, radiator support, I wanted to be unique and have a custom look, more like a, a box with an engine set, just sat down in it. So we took our uh, contour gauge again, and we got our shape that goes all the way up just beyond the front from the slope there and all the way back to the firewall. And then we uh, got our depth and I did make it a little bigger than what the measurement is. And the reason for that is it's always easier to take a little bit off, sand a little bit off than it is to put anything back on because you just can't do that. Uh, and here we transferred from the ruler over to the contour, or excuse me, to the uh, dial caliper. Uh, so we got our height that was easier to, to make my little tick marks on the plastic. And uh, then we made our shape to the uh, sheet plastic. And this is 30 thousandths, by the way. And then here's our test fit there. And you see it's a little extra, a little longer. But that's okay, because we're going we're gonna to be cutting that back at the firewall, too but we got a really good fit there. And the great thing with that is for both sides, all I did was just transfer that shape to the to another piece of plastic, exact same size, cut it, test fit it, and it, it fits just great. Next up was the firewall. And I really wasn't all that happy with the, the shape of the firewall. Uh, so you see where I marked the sides there and I cut those, those sides off because the, uh, the side inside fender wells are gonna be running right down along there, well, in that same area anyway. And where the transmission hump is, I wanted that instead of kicking back as it does, you see how it slopes backward on the bottom, back into the chassis. I want to maintain that for the uh, interior, but I want that to be more, again, like a box. I want it to come straight down. So what I did was I took some 20 thousandths um, and measured my depth 
and up to the crease where it starts off and you see here where I've got it taped on where that's going to be a little more straight down so it'll give it that little box here and then I'll cut the transmission uh, uh, housing or the, the tunnel right there I'll, I'll cut that back into it but uh, coming along really really nicely next up I want to I want to share with you and I, I posted this on some of the Facebook pages some of you already seen it Here's a look at a the Corvette 125th scale uh, wheel, tire, and disc brake. And the other four and the little wheel is the disc brakes for the 32nd scale. And as you can see, these turned out really, really well. Uh, kudos to uh, Miguel over at Hobby Works. He did the center hubs and the uh, calipers. And let me tell you, man, these things turned out absolutely awesome. Uh, had to do hardly anything to do those photo etch slot car uh, uh, discs and they just dropped right on there I mean check that out and I was able to find some uh, tiny little lettering to put on the calipers so give it give them a pretty good pretty good look are well, these just not cool I tell you <laughs> when I got them together and I just kind of put them down and looked at them I thought wow these things just ugh, this is really going to add to the car big time uh, I've already got uh, my little hole punched in the back for the brake line and everything. I, th th this is just fun. Uh, being this small, it is a little bit of a challenge in some spots, but uh, hey, to me, the challenges are the fun part too. Guys, appreciate you hanging around. Be sure to head over to Hobby Nut Models, check out Mark's inventory. Um, pick you up a model kit, some MCW paint, check out the supplies if you need them. Great deals there, man. All right, guys. Remember, Jesus loves you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.